A few days ago, I did a video on high voltage and what happens when you change the duty cycle and frequency. I spoke about how it changes the overall amount of voltage and amps in the circuit. So, guys, big shout out to Flamejet51. We have an awesome validation video here for you. I'll go ahead and play it and then I'll play the original video. If you're not already subscribed to this guy, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go ahead and subscribe to him. Guys, he's got some amazing stuff coming out. And I hope you enjoyed this video of validation that he did. Hey, hope everyone's good. This is a video on response to old man builds. Nathan's got a, a good point there. So let's let's take a look at what we've got going on here. So cruise over here, right? You notice what's happening here, right? You see how the frequency is changing, right? We have response there. Now let's look over here, right? So we initially dialed it up to 12 volts, but you can see we're just under four amps to draw, right? So when we actually change the pulse width, check this out. See that? See how the amps start dropping and the voltage rises, right? It's an inversion. Alright, we'll go the other way. Notice the amps are rising, voltage is dropping, right? There's your duty cycle action. I haven't adjusted the voltage at all, okay? Now when we look at the frequency, what happens this time, right? As I go up in the frequency, the amperage drawn goes down, right? And there it is. You hear that? That's what we're talking about right there. He's totally right. There's a five to one, okay? As we know, everything is connected. You know, you can't just change one thing and expect to get something, you know, isolated. Everything changes and moves with it. All right, so we're also looking at the actual resonant frequency of the, the flyback system itself, right? So I'm changing the pulse width. You notice we dropped a voltage, right? There's a raise in amperage. Pulse width down, right? Raise in voltage, drop in amperage. See that? Now we're increasing the frequency. Now we're decreasing the frequency. Now you, can, you hear that, right? So we're coming out of the ultrasonic range. Right, and this has a lot to do with the, the resonant frequency of our flyback, right? So everyone's slightly different. You gotta kind of find your zone. So look where we're at right now. Eight grand, right? Let's take it all the way, right? So you see that now we're way high on the amperage, right? So we'll change the pulse width. Yep, wrong way, right? See that? Lowering of amperage, raising of voltage. Right? And you can hear it kind of slowing up. So yeah, highly recommend checking out Old Man Build's video on this particular subject there is a lot going on right all right thanks you guys for watching hope that kind of makes some sense right there's always see that there it is you go up you go down right more current draw less current draw right? They're always related, right? And of course, always related to your resonant frequency of what's happening. Right? Whether you've got a flyback, you know, or you've got a flyback with a DC converter on it. All right. Yeah, I think that kind of shows some visual of what, what he's trying to describe, right? You ride a constant signal with a varying signal, you change the duty cycle, you change the frequency, see that? 
As we lower the frequency, we get a raise in amps. And there we go. Higher the frequency, lower amps, right? More volts. Yep, and a different style of discharge. You can see it's not super happy with that. It's kind of, all right. Come back down a little. All right. And look at that, we're back up to eight, almost eight amps. All right, thanks for watching. Take care. Before I play the original video, I wanted to give you a close-up look at the circuit that he is putting in his. This is for his high voltage. He has a video on his channel that explains exactly what this circuit is. So if you want to see that, check it out on his channel. Make sure you subscribe to him. Anyway, here we go, guys. Here's the original video uh, about the high voltage. We're going to talk about some high voltage. Now, this is going to be a little confusing in the, in the beginning, but we're going to get through it. Just understand this. What you think you know about high voltage is going to change today. So, is high voltage just amps and volts? The answer is no. Is it amps, volts, and frequency? No. There are several different factors that go into this. Some are the action that you put in. Some are the reaction you get when you put something in. Let me explain. Standard circuit. We take a 24 volt power pack. We run that into a ZVS driver. We run that onto a flyback transformer, DC flyback transformer. Then we can set up the two wires, the ground wire and the positive wire, and we can get voltage across it. Now, if I put in there 12 volts, and I put in there three amps, I'm going to get a predictable response. What you're not knowing is, is that you actually just put a frequency in based on your voltage and amps. Now, can you change that frequency? Most commonly people will tell you no, but the actual answer is yes. All you have to do is add two more parts. So on your voltage end, before you, when you get your 24 volt power pack here and you get your ZVS. All you have to put is a divider circuit in there. All it does is let the volts go through, but it's going to add a low end to it, which is going to be 5 volts. In that 5 volts, you add frequency and duty cycle. Now, here's the thing. When you add the frequency into it, is it going to change the MOF sets in what they're doing? And they're switching on and off, on and off. No, it's not. It's actually going to leave that alone. It's going to run frequency over top of everything else. And what is that frequency going to do? It's going to change the voltage and amperage and how they work. So, as I bring the frequency up, it's going to bring the amount of amps down. You say, but I have a set amount going in. It won't matter. It's actually going to bring them down. When you see the actual voltage cross, there's going to be a part in there that's white. That's how many amps you have in your circuit. As you raise your frequency up, the amount of white goes away, the amount of purple comes out better, and it thins out real heavily. So, what's going on there? By changing the frequency, you've now changed the amps. I've also changed the amount of heat that's coming through that circuit. It no longer, because the amps are less, has as much heat heat. As you can see, it changed it. Now, what did it also change? I changed the ability of that spark itself to be able to be airborne. Now it, it can be able to put a charge in the air, where with more amps, it won't allow it to do that. It'll keep that charge close to the surface. So, what does that mean? When I get it to go further out, I put a charge on it. When I get it to go in closer, I changed the magnetism on it. Now, that's a good understanding of how things are going, but just understand this. For one change, I had an effect on three to four different things in this. So, is it just voltage and amps? The answer is no. So, let's do this again. We now want to add a duty cycle. Again, we're not changing the ZVS. The offsets are still going to go on and off just where they are. But what does the duty cycle do? It goes over top that 
and adds a beat frequency. Now the beat frequency itself is going to control exactly how fast this comes out between the spark gap. It'll change it between going really fast when you turn up the duty cycle and then going out and extinguishing the actual spark gap when you go down lower. Again, it's changing it. But every time you change the beat frequency in this, it's also changing the amount of amps that go in. You're changing the amount of bolt volts that go in. You're changing the frequency in it. You're also changing how much magnetism is in it. That also changes the amount of charge something has. Now, when you change the frequency of this, you're also going to be able to change the sound. Guys, it's no longer just volts and amps. You have to account for everything when you start building high voltage this way. The master circuit is very simple. This is what I use in order to manipulate everything the way I want it to change everything to something totally different that's coming out. If I just want a circuit that does charge, if I just want a circuit that gives me more magnetism, if I just want a circuit that has more sparky voltage, okay, then I can do all of those things. Here's a circuit. We're going to start off on the low end. We're going to have a 555 timer that controls duty cycle. It's also going to control frequency. Do you have to put in a set frequency or can you just hook your iPhone up to it and connect it and get it to play music? Yeah, you can. But the simplest thing is stick with a small little circuit. They're about $8 on Amazon. You get three or four of them. They work great. I'll leave the link in the description. Now, the next thing you're going to have to have is a high-low. So you're going to want to have something in there that allows your voltage to go up and down at the rate you want it to, but it has the low end so that you get the frequency in it. That right there is very simple. They're about five bucks on Amazon. You can get one that has higher voltage in it so you can go higher if you want. Not a problem. The next part is just a standard ZVS. Use the one that you like best. That's the way I say it. The lower the wattage on it, the actual better the frequency comes through. Now, one thing I didn't mention is you're going to need some resistance in this circuit. So between your low end and your high end, you're going to want to run on the positive side a resistor in there. 20k ohms is what I usually do. You can go less, you can go without it. It all depends on how it works in the circuit and what you're trying to create. So that's kind of an option in there. So I don't generally put it in the main circuit. It's an addition to the circuit. Now, once you get to the ZVS, all you do is wrap your wire around that coil right there on the flyback. Now, why do I always just call it a pulse, magnetic pulse? Because that's basically what you're doing. And I don't care what driver you want to use to one of these things. As long as you have some kind of a magnetic pulse that goes in, you can use your Wilmhurst, you can use you know, your Van de Graaff, if you can get it to magnetically pulse, you can run that ZVS. So, you get it in there, you run the ZVS, you find which one's your negative, which is the one that sparks over most, you put them into a spark gap. Guys, we are looking at something that's fairly simple. This is not a hard circuit to build, but the amount of control that you're going to get out of it is truly amazing. So, why would we do this in this way? So, let's take a look at the bottom picture again. When you see that, just understand that. Again, it's going to go like this, like this, like this, and then all the way around until it gives you a bunch of different things that come out of there. And each one is going to move individually. This is not one of those situations where one goes up and then one comes in. One goes down and one goes out. This is not that. This is not the thing that you're seeing on the screen right now. It's going to change based on every little part that you put in there. Again, if you want this thing to thin out, all you got to do, change the frequency up. Your actual spark will begin to thin. The white will go away. It'll start to get a nice clean purple. This makes a lot of sense when you run two flybacks in series. Then... If you're getting too many amps, which I do a lot with new flybacks, I have to go in and change the frequency. When I change the frequency, I change the amps. I don't have to manually control the amps on the other end. I can simply do it by changing the frequency. Now it thins out my voltage. Now, 
every time it thins out voltage like that, I'm working in a charge system, not a magnetic system. So, what's the biggest difference in the two? I'm able to charge particles around it. So, when I do my paper lifter experiment, I'm actually taking the little paper UFO lifter, right? It's between two spots. It's between a small little piece of uh, aluminum and a big piece of aluminum. And the lifter will lift up. In the paper lifter UFO, okay, it just looks like a UFO. What happens? I'm going to charge this thing. And I'm going to make the air in it charged. So, when I go to push it up, it's going to have more weight in it than it does originally. Why? Because all of the actual oxygen atoms in there are going to be charged and they're going to go up. And they're going to make it cling now to that top plate. So when you flip this thing upside down, what's going to happen? Obviously, it's going to go down. When it does that, it's going to apply more force than the weight of the object itself. So if you say this thing weighs two grams, now it's going to end up looking like it's going to weigh three and a half. Why? It's the amount of charge that I'm putting in there based on the air inside of the paper itself. I know it's a big leap for some of you out there to understand that. But if you can get that in your head and understand it, then you're going to understand why scientists are using static electricity in order to use these circuits in order to get force. They're not doing by changing just one thing. That whole model is probably way outdated. And there's probably a better model out there. But not a lot of people realize this. So, when you change one thing in a circuit, you're changing all of them. You can go to extremes on this. Okay? You can use that same flyback. If you understand how to use it, you can change it to create lasers with it. That's on one side. On the other side, you get a pure charge. I can get 90% charge out of this circuit, and then 10% is all the rest of the stuff around it. But I'm getting a massive charge out of it. That is one of the differences you'll have to understand. Everybody wants to talk about TT Brown and his capacitors, but if you do not know how to apply high voltage, it is completely useless to you. You will have to learn this first. Now, the correct understanding, I just told you what it was. Every time you get into something like this, though, you have to watch out. High voltage will sometimes give you something that's radioactive. And I'm not talking a huge amount. This is not crazy amounts. But when you have the little meter, it's going to click a little bit. Sometimes you don't realize what you're building when you start getting into the higher voltages. This is not something to scare you. This is just something that happens. Realize it ahead of time so that you can fix it in your circuit and know the account for it. Just look for it. When you get too high, back away. Now, we're not running real big here, so you're not going to find that in our little ZVS circuit. It's not, not something that you're going to find. But the understanding of volts and amps is going to change for you. No longer are you going to look at it and say, well, I'll just put this many volts in it and this many amps and I'm okay. Well, high voltage is tricky because you can't exactly measure it, can you? You measure the spark gap and that's how many volts you think it is. Can you measure the frequency of it? Now, you could take your probe from your oscilloscope and put it out there and get the frequency. It's very distorted if you're not at a distance, so sometimes you have to stay away from it. And there's certain frequencies you don't want to be in. 50 to 60 hertz, don't put it near your TV. It's going to ruin everything. It's going to ruin your electronics. Don't put it in that range. So, get it up to the kilohertz. You'll start hearing the sound difference itself. That's pretty cool. Now, where do I like to run mine? I always like to see that purple. I want that to be as thin as possible. So, Say you want to do an ion thruster, right? You went to the plasma channel. You love the ion thruster. Uh, I built several of them. I left STLs on my uh, Thingiverse account. You can check them out. They're free. Basically, you want to just get ionized air. So what are you going to do? You want to thin that voltage out. High frequency, you're going to go low amps. You want low heat, you want this thing to go from one to the next. You're going to take your magnet wire on the top one. You're going to put razor blade slices in it so it has breakout points. Again, you want less breakout points than it would be with bare wire. That's why you do it that way. 
you can get the thing to flow. Now, bottom side, bare wire. Use what you want. It has to be bigger than the wire that you put in at the top. And it makes a nice, beautiful plasma flow. So, pretty simple. You can get anywhere 2.4 uh, meters per second is what I usually get out of one thruster. If you want it to go from one to the next, you better understand charge. You better understand the fact that you need to charge that air so that when it goes through there, you can start to multiply it. If you do not understand that point, don't bother. You will not be able to add a second one and add more to it. That's the understanding here. We're manipulating voltage in order to understand it properly. There is a whole science to this. This is not just volts and amps. You have to understand when you change one, you're changing multiple factors. So you go, okay, I go low frequency. I'm getting a lot more white in there. I'm getting a lot more amps in there now. And then what happens to the sound? The sound starts to go away. You're no longer at this ability to create sound. Well, not that we can hear anyway. Dog might go crazy. You know, something like that. And you he'll hear the sound. You won't hear it at all. But me being half deaf, I, I wouldn't hear it anyway. But anyway, but the opposite is also true. If I bring up the frequency, I thin out the voltage, and I'm able to hear an audible sound. That's the cool thing. So just understand this when you're building these type of circuits. You want the most range that you, some, you can possibly get. And there's ways to override things when you put in there a beat frequency over top, it'll override everything and everything will start going at that beat frequency, which they call a duty cycle. Uh, and then that's fine. But now you want to add frequency. It's going to go over the top of whatever frequency was in the circuit prior. As long as it's higher than the original frequency, it will now change it. And it'll be over the top. What I mean by saying over the top is mean it's going to take control of what you're actually doing. So, <laughs> sounds like a lot. Take it piece by piece. Build the circuit. Understand the circuit. Modify the circuit to your needs. There is so much more here than what you're usually getting. What, what I always tell people. What do you want to build the high voltage, high voltage for? Is it charge? Is it magnetism? Is it something else? You just want big sparks? You want to thin them out and get real big sparks? You can do that. That's always fun. Trust me. I've been known to light up a lot of di different things here in the garage, okay? That's not out of my realm of possibility. But for some people, they need a specific thing. Some need a little bit more balance in between all of them. And they're doing different projects like that. That's fine. It's all in this circuit. All you got to do is build it. What I'll do for you guys, I'll leave the link in the description for all the parts. You could put it together and build it, play with it, see what it does. I'm going to look to find a way to make this thing interactive. So if we can just get some kind of a charting system, where if you put in one voltage and one amperage and one frequency, it should be able to predict what the next part is. Until I can do something like that, guys, and unless you have something like that out there, we're going to have to stick with the old school method of build it and see what it does. You can map it if you want to. That's a lot of work. And it's probably going to take you probably a good part of a year. There's that much in one of these when you change it. Because it's not just one change affects one thing. One change could affect five things. And you're going to have to account for all five. And then as you change it one degree more, it's going to change it all again. This is like a... A flow of energy. It is not linear. It's a flow. Everywhere it flows, you're going to have to know exactly which part is flowing. If you can get this right, when you create your voltage, there's going to be nothing you cannot do with this high voltage circuit. If you get it wrong, you may have 90% of the right components, but because you did not learn this, you will not be able to get your project to work. Trust me when I tell you, build it. See what it does. Apply it to your work. 
you're going to have a much more satisfactory answer in the end. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. If you like what you saw today, like, share, subscribe, comment, do all those fun things. Have yourself a great day. Thank you.